All right, here's our final video. This is video number four. Uh, we had just finished talking about sterols. Now we will talk a little bit about uh, cholesterol, if I can get this to go. Uh, cholesterol is one of the most important uh, components of your cell membrane. Uh, this is the thing that attaches inside of blood vessel walls and causes them to thicken. So if you've heard of somebody that has high cholesterol, uh, often they uh, have high blood pressure because uh, their blood vessel walls get thicker and covered with these plaques. Um, and it also is something that is naturally produced within the, the body. It's not just coming from things we eat. It is something that is produced. Um, something like uh, steroids, um, which is uh, something that is often taken by athletes to get the bigger muscles. Um, these are things that are um, also built by the body, that you naturally have estrogen, naturally have testosterone, but that synthetic variants um, can be taken to increase the body size. Uh, we have phospholipids and waxes. Um, as you know, your body builds uh, this waxy buildup in a certain uh, area in your ears. Um, and phospholipids are these major components of the uh, cell membrane. Um, and the wax that's in your ear helps to protect, protect your eardrum uh, from water getting into your eardrum. And so uh, when looking at these phospholipids, uh, the way that they look is that um, these little tails all stick on the inside and then uh, the hydrophilic heads stick to each other. The hydrophobic tails stick to the inside and that helps to keep water on the outside of the cells. So phospholipids align so that their hydrophilic heads extend outwards towards the water while their hydrophobic tails are directed inwards. Uh, and um, this is what builds up that, that uh, plasma membrane around the outside of your cells. Uh, next we get into proteins. They're versatile macromolecules that serve as uh, building blocks of your body. So basically uh, you are made up of proteins. And uh, proteins are these building uh, bodybuilding macromolecules. Every part of your body is basically made of protein. Um, Proteins are structural, like your hair and your fingernails. Um, in other animals, feathers, horns, cartilage, tendons. Um, it's also protective. It helps to coagulate your blood, fight off uh, microorganisms inside of your blood. Uh, it's regulatory, meaning it controls your cell activity and uh, constitutes some hormones. It's contractile, so it allows your muscles to contract, uh, your heart to pump. Uh, if you produce sperm, it allows those sperm to swim. Uh, and it also uh, takes part in uh, transportation, carrying molecules such as oxygen around your body. So if you didn't have prote proteins, you wouldn't be able to survive. Um, proteins are built up of amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids that are strung together uh, in order to make these proteins. And uh, the way that amino acids are put together um, is that they have a uh, side chain to them. Uh, this is the unique part of the 20 different amino acids that varies in sizes. Uh, and it has what's called an amine group. If you can see this, the N and then the three hydrogens. Then we have a carbon with a hydrogen and the carboxyl group, which is a carbon and two oxygens. Um, and the, basically, based on whatever structure that these are put into, uh, they build the different proteins that do the different things inside of our bodies. And so proteins are uh, an essential dietary component. You wouldn't be able to get the uh, proteins that you need if you didn't eat them. And proteins are essential in um, uh, the building blocks of who we are. So as we grow, as we repair our bodies, and as we replace cells that are worn out, um, this uh, protein is absolutely essential. Uh, there are often food labels that indicate an item's protein content, um, and this might be insufficient for you to determine whether your protein is deficient or even if your protein intakes uh, exceed your recommended daily amount. Because depending on how muscular you are, uh, whether uh, what your, um, your BMI is, um, 
not all proteins are created equal and not all proteins uh, are especially healthy and made of the right types of amino acids. So just because you know that there's protein in something doesn't mean that you know that the right kind of protein is in something. Um, what we are looking for is complete proteins. And these all have essential amino acids. Um, we have some proteins that are incomplete proteins, uh, meaning they don't have all the amino acids that our body needs in order to, uh, in order to regulate itself. Um, and we also have some proteins that are called complementary proteins uh, that help the proteins um, get the rest of those amino acids uh, that they need. Uh, so sometimes you can hear of bodybuilders taking uh, certain types of amino acids in order to complement the proteins that they're eating in order to have all of the essential amino acids. Because if you're missing any of those, you're really missing uh, an important part of your, of your diet. And so then we have um, the way that a protein uh, is going to uh, function is influenced by its three-dimensional shape. So here you can see that there is a primary structure to, uh, to a protein. Um, that's its amino acids all uh, bonded together by these uh, peptide bonds. Um, and it's similar to spelling out a word. It's got all the different amino acids in the order uh, that it needs to be in. Uh, then, as the proteins become more complicated, they have secondary structure where they have like a corkscrew kind of shape that's held together by these hydrogen bonds. Uh, finally, we can see a tertiary structure where it's got multiple twists and the way that it bends all around. Uh, and you'll see that a lot coming up here in uh, the lab that we do on enzymes. Uh, and finally, the quaternary structure is the way that all of the peptide chains look when they're bonded together. And so um, the, way that a, uh, the way that a protein is shaped is going to uh, show what it's able to do. So uh, one of the interesting questions here is why is wet hair easier to style uh, than dry hair? If you look at uh, hair, uh, you can see one of the main ways that uh, the proteins are put together, and that's often based on the genetic code. So uh, somebody who's got naturally straight hair, uh, their proteins are going to be uh, more naturally straight. And someone who has um, the proteins that are uh, making up this curly structure are going to have curly hair. So you're born with this, um, and it's often not very easy uh, to change it. So uh, next we get into nucleic acids, which we'll really get into more in uh, Chapter 5 when we talk about DNA. Um, but DNA is going to hold all the genetic information in order to build an organism. Um, this is found in every single one of your cells. Uh, all of the instructions needed to, com uh, to make a complete you are found in every single one of these cells. Um, and uh, what this is is uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. That's what DNA stands for, deoxyribonucleic acid. And the way that DNA is put together is uh, in the shape of a double helix. This is the, the twisted ladder type of shape. And uh, when you get down to the real uh, nitty gritty of the structure, you can see that um, the DNA is composed of base pairs that hold it together. Um, we've got adenine, which is A, is always connected to thymine, which is T. And then guanine, which is G, is always connected to cytosine. Um, so we always see these pairing together because if you look at the number of hydrogen bonds that are holding A and T together is 2. The number of hydrogen bonds that are holding G and C together uh, is 3. And that's why they always pair um, in that uh, combination. So A always bonds with T. G always bonds with C. So if we were to ask ourselves, um, if we have one strand of DNA that is uh, C, 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 T, T, A, G, G, A, A, C, C. And we were to ask, what is the complementary strand to that? Well, since G always goes with C, the complementary strand would start off G, 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 G. And then T always goes with A, so A, A, and then T, C, C, T, T, G, G. 
So it's easy for us to figure out what uh, two uh, strands of DNA or complementary strands are going to go together. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and uh, that's the end of Chapter 2. We'll see how much we can get into uh, Chapter 3 uh, the next time in class, and then that will be what's coming up on your test. Uh, please make sure that you are reading uh, your chapters as we go along. You should be through Chapter 2 now, um, and if you haven't caught up with that, uh, make sure that you're reading those and moving on to Chapter 3 where we'll be talking about cells. And um, that is